Okay, um, I, before we begin, I, we actually have Flat Earth Dave back with us again today. And um, I can say this is one of my um, most watched videos other than the case I'm working on, um, almost like 3,900 views, which I think was a pretty good success. Um, and it must have resonated and made sense with a lot of other people because at least two other people that saw his video and knew me on another platform actually are now not only subscribed to Dave, but they're, they're like, oh, he's making a lot of sense. So <laughs> please keep watching because what he has to say, I'm telling you will blow your mind. Now, um, again, before we begin, I have to say uh, hello to a young man. He's one of my youngest viewers, not on the other stuff I do, but um, videos like this. He's seven years old and he saw the last video I did with Dave and he was so excited because he he's seen me before and he knows me and he kept waiting for us to say hi to him but he didn't understand that it was a pre-recording so this time i'm going to say hi malachi thank you for watching and glad you enjoy this and i'm telling wow. you dave he he loved everything you had to say and he talked about it for days afterwards the so. truth the truth resonates with young um children the problem is that, you know, by the time you get to 10 years old, you're so indoctrinated. There's so much program programming that it's kind of hard to break because it comes the foundation of your life. But once you uh, drop your ego and luckily, you know, kids, you know, their egos aren't as built up as us old, older adults. Um, it's really easy to see. And, and here's the other thing, the flat earth, we have so much to learn. There's so much to learn. There's so much we don't know. But what we all know clearly is that we don't live on a spinning ball flying through space. That's utterly ridiculous. Utter, utterly ridiculous. Is that correct? Utterly yes. ridiculous. <laughs> and um, the teachers that teach it doesn't make them bad people. It makes them lazy people, right? Because they haven't looked. You know, if someone says, hey, the earth is a globe, I say, what's your number one proof? And all they can come up with is photos, Aristophanes, sunsets. You know, all of the stuff that once you look into it, actually prove the earth is flat. And it's interesting you, you mentioned that because um, I had sent you um, a video, which I don't think you probably got my email so messed up, but it was a video on this gentleman. Um, I don't know if I should say his name or not, but he was supposedly was trying to prove the globe by using his bicycle and two sticks. And he's quoting um, er Eratosthenes or however you say this gentleman's name. Eratosthenes. And I remember you covering that. And I'm like, wait a second. You, you explain that so much better than my brain could comprehend. So I didn't even comment on this video, but could you show everybody again how that is just ridiculous? You can't use two sticks to prove a globe. Right. You know, Aristophanes, uh, back in, uh, you know, 2000 years ago, whenever it was, he noticed that he could see the sunlight shining in the bottom of a well on a certain day of the year. And that proved that the sun is over over his head, directly over his head. Easy. Anybody can can deduce that. And then the story is he sent his buddy 500 miles away to at the same time um, measure the 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 angle of the sun. And the story changed from wells to sticks, sticks and wells, doesn't matter, it's the same experiment. So if you put a, a stick up on that day where Aristophanes was in Said, um, there's no shadow at solar noon or whatever, okay? And then at the same time, somehow he was communicating with his buddy, if you believe the narrative of our timeline, how the heck did he communicate with his buddy? How did he measure the 500 miles? There's a whole bunch of questions. And his buddy's stick had a shadow. Well, well first you have to assume parallel rays coming from an infinitely distant sun or a very distant sun. The farther away you pull that light, the angle, the, the light rays come in straight. But why would he assume that when nobody has ever seen parallel rays? Nobody ever sees parallel rays. So that's just a, 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 a huge, you know, that's pre-assuming a distant sun. Well, you can't pre presume a distant sun. And his experiment is right if we lived on a ball with a distant sun, but we don't have any proof of that. And there's actually proof that we don't live on a ball, but with a small local sun, here he is, no shadow. Here's his buddy, shadow, angles, shadow length. He could do the same math and figure out the sphericity of this flat plane, right? So when you have bad data and you use math, 
you get bad answers. So, you know, Aristophanes was touted as being the first mathematician, first guy ever to figure out the size of the spherical Earth, right? He would be the most famous mathematician ever, but through, through the years and centuries following him, other mathematicians that lived in the same area that wrote many books never once mentioned him. And the analogy that I use is that's like me writing a, uh, um, a history of the Chicago Bulls and just leaving out Michael Jordan. I'm not, never going to mention him. Right. And, you know, I never even heard that name until like within the last year. I had no idea this person even existed. You well, know, it, did he exist is the question. You know, you look at all of these people that uh, uh, the, the stories, cool stories of, um, of you know, leaders, um, scientists that prove the globe. I don't we have no proof that these guys ever existed. I think all of our history is a lie, all of it. And when you start looking into Tataria and mud floods, um, your understanding of what this place was is completely wiped out. I mean, our the, the question is, what happened? How, how, when, when, where did this, this other civilization go? There, but it's not a theory that they existed because there is structures all over the earth, everywhere, all across the earth. Ancient, advanced civilization was here not that long ago, 100, 200 years ago, okay? And, you know, I remember you talking about that in our last video, too, and I had never even heard of tar what's tar Tataria. Tataria. Uh -huh. I Tataria. I'd never even heard of that word before. And so I did a lot of research, and I came across um, someone had this video, and it was old. Show yes, and it was an actual video, and it got to the point to where they were doing like a big, huge state fair, and this was before um, supposedly oh. lights were, you know, all of the wiring and stuff had been invented, and this entire city was lit up with lights with no wires, and right. then there was a moving sidewalk. If I hadn't seen it in the video myself, I would have said, "Okay, you guys have jumped and, off the." And I believe end. I believe that one there. If you look at the people carefully, there was some very very tall people, maybe like twelve feet tall in that video. Okay, so that goes back to giants. But think about this: this thing was built back in a time where people are in horsey and horse and buggies with hemp ropes and stuff. How did they build this? And I thought about that my whole life because the architecture of old buildings has always fascinated me. And I'm always like going, well, why are we building stick cabins, but yet they have these massive cathedrals? Who built those cathedrals? Obviously not the same people. <laughs> right. And then if you look into the mud floods, what, what's that? Um, there was a something that buried much of the earth. And we don't know if it happened all at once in regions. We could argue about that all day, but there's no question that there's buildings that are buried. If you look at our Capitol building, there's old pictures showing that there's another building underneath it. Our Capitol building was here before Columbus got here, if that's even a true story. Okay, yeah. so our realm, the, the lie is 100 years old. Not, it's, it's somewhere around 100 years old because, you know, the World's Fairs, you go look at the World's Fairs from, um, you know, California from us, from I think it was in San Francisco. The structures that they built there are unbelievable. And they built them in a year, which is impossible. And then they tore them down right after the fair. That was literally the, the end of the takeover. Then they introduced the world wars and everything. And these wars are just part of the reset. Get rid of all of the old knowledge and, and um, you know, go from there. Oh, it's, it's, it's just incredible. And I actually shared that video with um, some other friends of mine and they haven't gotten back to me yet, but I'm like, when you see a moving sidewalk right. in the 1800s and there's nothing there and we know that they didn't have, you know, um, whatever those things are called. And it's not an escalator, but you know what I mean? Those like we have at the airports these days, it's like, how did they get the sidewalks to yeah, move? There, and there's so much here. more there, you know, if you, um, do you have my app yet? Yes, I do. So in the app, if you hit the web button and then the middle column on the right, um, there's mud floods in Tataria. You hit that button and I add new videos to it all the time. Up come great channels. Now, this is just some of their work. Like these videos right here, those are by John Levy, 20 minute video every week. Awesome. Some people go, oh my God, his voice is going to make me go to sleep. <laughs> it grows on you. It really grows on you. Like um, I listen to most of my videos at two X, but I listen to I could listen to him at four X and understand him. But uh, <laughs> but I listen to him at regular speed because the images he's showing are so amazing. You don't want to skip. You don't want to just skip through them. 
And which um, one did you go to again? I, I'm that, that is the the web button, the one that looks yeah. like a a uh, yeah. the middle middle uh -huh. uh, second row, and then it says mud floods Tataria on the second row to the right. Okay, that could move. And this, by the way, these scroll down. Oh, okay. I'm adding more and more stuff. But you hit mud floods, and um, what I say is, if you if you see a video that you really like, uh, subscribe to that channel, and then start watching all of their videos. I mean, yeah, okay. there, there you go, you okay. got it. So. Yeah. Again, so others can see. Yeah, ah, yes. I don't know why it's so bright. Sorry, but yes. Is my is my uh, screen showing up clearly? Or is there stuff? Is there stuff behind it? Is no. My, um, the, the image right here is this is this clear? Yes, very clear. Very okay, clear. Good, good, good. Mine was not. I was having a problem yesterday. I think it has to do with Streamyard, but we're on we're on Zoom. Um, and and check that out. Especially what was the boy's name? Mikael or Malachi? Malachi. Malachi. Watch John Levy's videos. And you'll be the smartest kid in your school. You may be ridiculed a little bit until people catch on, but you'll be the smartest kid in your school. Well, the good thing is, is he's homeschooled. So his mom oh, really got into this, but he has no problem even going up to people on the street and he just starts conversations. I mean, this little seven-year-old boy just goes around going, you know, the earth is not round. It's flat. Good it's for so him. Cute. Good for him. Stand in your truth. Mm -hmm. And um, okay, and the next thing, um, oh, uh, the the this was one of the things, and this could be something I'm completely misunderstanding, but we all know that there was a, a solar eclipse on December 4th. We know something happened. I don't quite understand, and I have, I'll be honest, I have your app, but I have not gone and watched the eclipse videos yet. However, um, I'm looking at this and I was trying to watch and I'm looking at all of these videos that supposedly NASA put out and all of these other professionals put out and you know they're changing the filters and when you're looking at the sun it's just this massive bright light you never see solar flares around it's just a big circle of light and as whatever is passing over that's supposed to be the moon I, I'm I get these confused well, um, here's the problem when there's a solar eclipse that's when the moon comes in front of the sun and blocks okay. the sun. That's the official story. I'm calling nonsense right. on that because yes, the moon is near the sun when there's an eclipse. It's, an eclipse only happens when there's a new moon. That means there's no light on the moon, okay? Right. And, and so no light on the moon and it's near the sun. Okay, I can understand how it would be hard to see the moon because the sun's behind it and it's blinding your eyes. But during a sol total solar eclipse, when the moon is blocking out the entire sun, how come we can't see the moon? We don't. Yeah. We just see a black, a black spot. And the Earth's shine should light up the moon brighter than the moonshine lights up the Earth. Okay? So what is the eclipse? If you ask me, I think uh, it, it's, it's a... Um, I think that the sun and the moon that we're seeing are reflections of their actual source, which is behind them, which is higher in the sky. So I think that the new, this, and now there's other dark, there's other, um, cos, there's other cosmology saying there's other dark bodies up there. I don't know the answer, but I can recreate it showing you how, how, um, how the sun goes behind, go, block, the, the, the moon would block the sun from being projected and, and it creates an eclipse and you can never see the moon. Have you seen my video on that? Maybe, maybe it's worth showing. It takes like two minutes. No, go ahead, please show. I have not watched it yet. So uh, in the app, again, let me go full screen here. If I hit the question mark and then I hit uh, what about eclipses in the bottom right? And then I go down a little bit. Where is it? There it is. So this video and yeah, so so there was an eclipse a couple of years ago that somebody was filming. All right, so on the left here is my simulated eclipse. And on the right is an actual eclipse that I filmed. And we, it was, the sky was a little hazy, so it was really easy to film. And again, what is eclipsing it? So uh, somebody in Michigan um, a year or two ago filmed the eclipse and there was this little moon. Now there was this little moon r right there. The one that says not lens flare. The other one yeah, is a lens flare. Now that's locked to the sun. Why isn't it moving around? Is the camera's moving around? If it's a lens flare, it should move. And we're like, what is that? And now 
the, the eclipse was about 85% at this point. But the reason you don't see it on the main, the main sun there is just because it's so bright, it's blowing out the lens. But it is 85% eclipsed. It is getting darker, right? You just can't okay. see it on the big part. So, so my theory is that that, that little one, that's, that little eclipse that's to the, off to the bottom right, is the actual source, the actual source of the sun, right? What do I mean by that? That is the projector. You ever watch a movie being projected onto a sheet and the movie yes. camera is behind it? You can see the movie on the sheet, but if you stare at the sheet carefully, you can see the source of that projection behind it as a right. light. So imagine that being a source and it's being projected, what I call into the sky sheet, right? So okay. here's me simulating, um, Here's me simulating an eclipse. Now we have the sun. There's the source of the sun then coming out of that tube. And I have a new moon, which is just a bottle cap, eclipsing it. And that looks exactly like what we see. Okay. Yeah. So, so you don't see the moon. You just see something eclipsing it. And that's because we're not, there's no light on the moon. So it's not being projected. If there's some light on the moon, we'd see the lit part of the moon projected. But then I said, okay, how, what is that little, how do they see that little thing? And I said, you know what, maybe that paper towel I use is too opaque because the sky isn't maybe that opaque. So I use tissue paper and watch what happens when I did it with a thinner medium. Here comes the eclipse from behind. And if you look off to the right there, that's the source that we're seeing. Oh, right, wow. Right there. That's the source that's being projected. And if you compare that to the actual eclipse, kind of looks exactly the same. It really does. Okay, yeah. see, that makes sense. Now, um, now wow. is that the case? I don't know. It sure makes a lot of sense. Makes a lot more sense than this whole heliocentric, um, nonsensical model. Now, think about this. They tell us that the moon is, uh, the sun is 400 times bigger and 400 times farther than the sun. And that's why they look like they're the same size, okay? Because one's far away, right? The odds of that happening are, well, we'll just say one in 400. The odds of them lining up perfectly are a bazillion to one, okay? That's yeah. for it happening once. But guess what? There's eclipses every year. Every yeah. year in different parts of the world. And after 18 years, guess what happens? They repeat. The whole so cycle cyclical. repeats again. It's cyclical. Oh. It's like a perfect clock in the sky. Wow. I yeah. did not know that. I, that's wow. Yeah, they and, they're on a there's there's two different solar cycles, um, and they they uh, they eclipse right in the sky. I mean, they they re, they repeat every um, every uh, every eighteen years. So here's a here's a quick little um, a, a further experiment I did. So this is called, where do you see the sun? I have a blue sheet hanging. I have a light 10 feet on the other side of it, which looks just like a sun, doesn't it? It and does. I, I'm here with my, <laughs> with my girl Paige. And I said, where do you see the sun? And she points right there. I'm like, well, I see the sun over there. And now I'm looking from her point of view. That's where she sees the sun. Uh huh. And I see the sun over here. Right. Okay. So we all see the, these projections in a position relative to our own was I call within our personal atmospheric dome. What does that mean? Well, when you look through the air, especially across the plane, the air just becomes so thick at one point, it becomes sky. That's what sky is. Sky is where the air becomes too opaque to see through. Okay. okay? Well, you can't see, that's the sky. And so when the sun comes around, it, it's projected, we see it, at the limit of our vision. We, that's where it manifests. Like if you ever go out on a, the sun, where the sun is out, but you have a fog, a fog comes in, it looks like the sun is right there in the fog. You see it like it's right there. It's like really close because on those weather conditions, that's where it's manifesting for you. So on a clear day, it manifests at a, a certain distance. And then as it comes over you, it looks like it's getting higher. And I think, you know, and I'm trying to do an experiment to show this, that when we see the sun on the horizon, it's closer. Its apparent position is closer. Think about this. And then as it comes over and it's rising, it's actually getting farther away because its apparent position, I, my, 
my my dome of vision when I look straight up, let's just say it's a hundred miles, just for a number. It could be I'm one right. mile, a hundred miles, a thousand miles, a hundred miles. But when I'm looking across, it's only fifty miles. So when the sun rises, it's fifty miles from me. At noon, it's a hundred miles from me, even though it's coming towards me. Okay. And um and and then um you know that's that's kind of how we see it. Now that's just my opinion, right? Here's a, a quick little example. This looks really cool in person. This sun that you see right here, it's literally floating in midair inside of this thing. And all I'm doing is I'm moving a light source over it. I'm holding my iPhone. It's got the light on it. And it literally looks like a spherical sun floating in free space in here. Yeah, it does. Wow, it does. Yeah. Oh, that's incredible. Yeah. The, the, and and I've and that you helped explain because a lot of times, especially since I've moved here, um, there are times like when the moon rises, it is massive on the quote unquote horizon, just massive. And then when you get overhead, it's like all of a sudden it's a little tiny round dot again. <laughs> all right, but but here there's there's several things that are happening here. One, you have the atmospheric magnification, yes. Two, it's an optical illusion. Mm -hmm. It's not much bigger than it is when it's above you. But because it's close to the land, because of the way that you see it, it looks mm -hmm. gigantic. You take a picture of it and it's a tiny little dot, right? It's like, <laughs> wow, look at that. You take a picture and you're like, wait a minute, it's horrible. Okay? <laughs> you, can, you can trick your brain into seeing through this illusion. Turn around, put your back to the moon when you see a giant moon on the horizon, bend over and look at the moon upside down through your legs and it's tiny. Wow. Okay, I'll have to try that. <laughs> it's crazy. And then it breaks this, this optical illusion, um, you know, of, of what you actually see. This is, um, I just wanted to show you this. So these are, let's imagine a person standing in each one of these. This is California. This is the uh, East Coast on the other side. And as the sun is moving over, this is where each person sees the, sees the sun. This is that little convergence point that we just watched in that dome. So it's like one o'clock yeah. in the afternoon there. It's evening over here. I'm just bringing it back. Wherever the sun is, the actual sun shows you where it's noon, but everybody sees it in a different position relative to their personal atmospheric dome. Yeah. Okay. Well, that makes sense to me. Yeah. Um, there, and you were talking um, earlier, just to, actually just a few minutes ago, and that's something else I wanted to touch on. Um, because a lot of the NASA photos talk uh, show, um, you know, the Earth and the Moon, right? They're supposedly on the Moon, and then they're supposedly seeing the Earth in the distance. And the Earth is this little teeny tiny ball, right? But right. yet, in the scheme of things, in their photographs, you show this little tiny Moon and this big massive Earth like this. So if they're on the Moon, why is not the Earth taking up the vast majority of the Earth's of the Moon's atmosphere or the sky? Supposedly, it should. If, if you're looking at perspectives, but yet they have it like we're looking at the moon from the earth. So, I mean, they can't make it. Okay. What I'm trying to say is according to their photos, they are trying to make the earth the same size as the moon at that distance. When in, they're showing us in other photos, like I said, the moon is tiny, the earth is huge and it's doing this. So why not when you're on this section and you see this big thing, why is it all of a sudden this far away? Yes, that makes no sense. Yeah, this is supposedly the Earth rise from a Japanese um, trip to the moon. This is just a cartoon. You know, yeah. Kenny and Cartman and Kyle from South Park are laughing at this. But, well, but people, yeah. people just want to believe it. Right? Yeah, because when they talk about the size of the moon and then compare it to the size of the Earth, the Earth is massive compared to the moon. But yet here, it makes it look like it's the same size. Right. And, and then also think about this. Why don't we see any stars from space? Okay. This is what it should look like on the top there, but this is what they show us, right? Because they can't fake it. Because if you start showing stars, people are going to be like, wait a minute, that doesn't make sense. They're going to do, they're going to just prove it. So they show us black and they go, oh, the optics of our cameras that, you know, we get $63 million a day for um, don't work, you know? This uh, is, and what, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but yeah. I actually did write, this was years and years and years ago before I even thought about flat earth. Um, I actually had that same question and I, I went onto the NASA website and I wrote an astronaut, you know, cause they have these 
astronauts that answer questions. And I asked him that. I'm like, why do you, why are there no stars? Why can you not see stars on the moon? Right. And his response was, well, because they're so far apart from each other that from where we're looking, it's just nothing but deep space and because they're too far apart. That's, and I fell I've for never it. even heard of that answer, but how dumb is it. that? You fell for it. I because, did. Yeah, people want to trust authority. That's a, you know, if you give your trust away, if your teacher tells you something that you know isn't, doesn't make sense, you need to question it. But people go, oh, my teacher told me it's in the book, well, the Rockefeller funded textbook that, you know, no private company could compete with because they sell them for a tenth of the cost that it cost to make them. So nobody could actually make a textbook right. and sell, you know, schools are purposely underfunded. So they can't go, you know what? I'm going to pay a hundred times the cost for a real textbook, but they can't. So they buy the Rockefeller textbooks for $5 a piece that actually costs $30 a piece to make. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So, you know, that, that's how they, they, you know, and then they set the curriculum school, anyone that's being homeschooled. Here's the thing in the future, not even in the future now, right? I had my own business for a while. I will hire homeschooled children, I will hire people that are go against the narrative, people that understand that we don't live on a spinning ball, people that are opening up their minds, right? You know, these, these kids that are homeschooled now, they're the future of America, future of the world. Yeah, I agree. Absolutely. Right. <laughs> yes, please go on with this one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is just before the moon landing. We've got the head of NASA, you know, uh, Arthur C. Clarke. We've got you know, uh, Kubrick, you know, all of these guys together in Hollywood. Hmm. Yeah, things that make you go, hmm. <laughs> yeah, things that make you go, BS. <laughs> I agree. Right. Oh, and um, there's an article I, I, again, I tried to send you, and it was talking about propulsion through space. And I know I'm jumping all over here, yep. but this one really got me. And what, what it was explaining is, um, they say that people have a misconception that um, it's getting pushed up by the force of the, the jet engine pushing off of the tarmac, but they say in reality, that's not it. And in space, how it can keep moving is because it's um, pushing against the atoms of the gases that are being shot from the rocket. So it's not really pushing against the vacuum of space, but it's pushing against the atoms and the particles at the, <laughs> at, at the bottom of the rocket that's shooting out the gas. And, and I'm like, it just seems so ludicrous because it's like they cannot carry that much fuel to make a trip up and back. There's a absolutely. And, and there, there, it, it makes absolutely no sense. And there's been you know, proofs in little small vacuum chambers where they try to do propulsion and it doesn't work. You can't have combustion in space and, right. and there's nothing to push off. You know, propellers on boats push off water. Airplane propellers push off the air. You know, mm -hmm. what, what do these rockets, how do they navigate? How, does, how do we, you know, how does Halley's Comet, just changing topics a little bit, go away for 76 years and come back and find us when we've been moving 4.4 billion miles a year? Okay. Yeah. The, and they're like, oh, well, it's just mirroring your images. Everything's <laughs> mirroring your images. The idea, so, you know, I've been able to wake up a couple of like science teachers or, you know, people that are in the teaching field when I talk about the distance of stars. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. The closest star is 25 trillion miles away. You can't fathom that distance. Right. So when I shine a light, if I held a, um, a, a hundred watt flashlight an inch from the wall, all of that light is concentrated on that wall right there. Bam. Nice and nice and bright. And I pull it back 10 feet. Now it's a big wide cone. So all of that light had to be spread out. Imagine that light like a stick of butter. So you got that stick of butter in, a, you know, three square inches, a three inch circle. And now you got to spread it out over 10 foot circle. Well, it's getting thinner and thinner right? Mm -hmm. That light is dissipating because it's being spread out over more and more. So the brightness of a star that we see at 25 trillion miles away would have to be so bright. At, it, it's, it's unthinkable. Okay. It's, it's, it's actually even just at a couple light hours away. It's four 
433 light years away. No, no, that, that's Polaris. I'm sorry. Polar it's um, four and a half light years away. It's the closest star. Four and a half light years. We can scientifically prove that our sun at three light hours away is, what is magnitudes too far to see. Okay? And then the brightness issue, you know, the inverse square law of light says every time you double the distance of something, it's a quarter of the brightness because it's spreading yeah. out. Okay? Once you, but, it, once, but people, people are short circuit. They're not able to process these numbers. Yeah. And, and now again, <laughs> I got into so much trouble in my science classes, you know, because you know, I, I would always, and I still think this way, even before I, I found like you and, and um, others like Eric Dubay who talk about this subject um, of flat earth, I still thought I'm like going, it makes no sense. How are we even able to see? We can't. I mean, if you're thinking logically, we can't even see a car 10 miles away or five miles away, you know, or let alone put it 50 miles away or even a big massive balloon or the, whatever the largest thing we have, you put that thing 50, 100 miles away, we're not seeing it. But yet we're supposed to believe that this sun that is light years and light years and trillions and trillions of miles away, we can see just fine and it's warming us up. It just yeah. doesn't make sense. Yeah, ab absolutely. So think about this. Um, you know, people's like, what about the space station? Well, the space station is approximately the size of a football field, size of a 747. They're, they're all pretty close in size. Think about a 747 at cruising altitude, right? What does it look like? It looks like a tiny little dot. You can yeah, tell it's small. an airplane. Mm -hmm. Can you actually see the engines that are on it? No. No, you can't, right? And they're bigger than most satellites, right? If I doubled the height of that 747, could you see it at all? No. Absolutely not. Scientifically provable that you can't see it. But we can see the ISS, which is 50 times higher. 50, five zero times higher. Okay? <laughs> right? But 50 times higher. And, and we can see satellites that are 100, 200 times higher. Okay? Which are the size of the engine. Okay? Again, people just short circuit. Like, well, I was never taught to think like that in school. So I'm just going to have to believe that the light reflecting off of it, it just shines right to my eye and stays at the same intensity. All, all complete and utter nonsense. But in, And I was talking to, well, not talking, going back and forth on a comment on someone else's video. They were doing a flat earth video I was watching earlier, or actually over the weekend. And they were just make, actually they were making fun of flat earth. And so I just, you know, I'm just made a basic comment like, okay. And something that, again, I noticed before I even found you is like, but they don't adjust for bridges. They don't adjust for roads. They adjust for nothing. And if we're on a curve here, I had to go out and buy one, <laughs> but if we're on a curve, that is good. Those roads that it's going to have to curve to follow. Wait, and, wait, wait. And how, like, how long ago did you get that globe? Just uh, about a month or two ago. What, is there a sticker on the bottom? On the bottom of the base? Is there a sticker? What does it say? Read it. Read the, read the sticker. Globes are not meant for educational purpose, but only for decorative purposes. Yes, there you go. <laughs> so, so one of the things, you know, the, the so uh, getting back to the ISS, I've seen it. I had an app. It's like, oh, it's going to show up here. And he, oh, there it is. And then it went across the sky. It took about eight minutes to go across the sky. Well, eight minutes from Connecticut. It's going 17,000 miles an hour. It should be in California already. But I can yeah. still see it. Are you kidding me? And, no, and people in California can't see it because it's not on their viewing trail. So that means it's much closer. So one of the things is there's an app that you can say, hey, from your location, you'll be able to see the ISS transit the sun or the moon. And we, when we heard about that, we're like, ah, oh, this is fake. But we did it, and we actually caught it. We saw it, right? So here's the ISS transiting the moon. Well, here's an airplane over there transiting. They look about the same size. So the only thing you can consider, well, we know the size of one of them. We know the size for sure of the plane. Right. So we know that both of these things have to be about the same altitude if they're the same size. Right? right. So it's all a trick. It's done with uh, where uh, one whistleblower, unconfirmed, told us that it's five B B two bombers, old B two bombers that were 
retrofitted where parts of the wings are made out of transparent material. It's, uh, it's got LED lights all over it. And that's how we, that's what we're seeing at night. But then when it goes in front of the sun and moon, it's just black because you don't ever see it approaching or exiting. You just see it transit. And it's just, it's just a, it's just a parlor trick. There's five of them. Two of them are based in Alaska, two or three. And then the other ones are in other countries. And then they just schedule these things and they, they fly and they tell you where you can see them and they do all the math. And then it's a, it's a big elaborate trick to make you think you're insignificant and live on a ball. Yeah, this uh, right here so. proves the ISS is not what they say it is. Done. That also unwinded to NASA's lying about everything. NASA's mm-hmm. taking $63 million a day. NASA doesn't get our $63 million. They're just taking it because they control us with money. NASA doesn't need money. Right. Money. Anything they want, to, any polo trick they want to do, they just get whatever they want. Type numbers into a computer, everything. They, they don't need money. Government doesn't need money. It's all a trick to control us. Exactly. And, you know, one of my jobs, I worked for um, a government contracting facility, and I've heard you make this statement before, and you are 100% correct. Everything that is done is completely compartmentalized. No one company does everything on any of these. It is divided up, subcontracted out. You get a main contractor, you have subcontractors, and then a sub subcontractor that they them, everything is parted out to everything. And nobody knows, well, except for probably, you know, I, my assumption would be someone like Lockheed may know, get the final. But well, none of these other places see the final product. They just know they're told to build this. Right. And, then, and there, you know, there's so many people that my father, my grandfather, he worked on the Apollo mission. He made the hinge. He made the door handle. He made the, the seat. Yeah, these people make seats. People make satellites and they think mm-hmm. that they're going into space, but they're going up on balloons. OK, yeah. they don't see it launched. Um, you know, maybe someone made the satellite think that it's floating in space, but this thing is going up on a balloon. NASA controls all the helium in the world. OK, and they're the largest consumer of helium. Right. Yeah. Well, and a lot of these launches are classified. A, a, an average everyday Joe Blow, you're not allowed. I there's so many times that I wanted to go to some of these launches because, again, I was part of, you know, I was in. I believed all this stuff. Well, I didn't, I never believed went to the moon, but I believed this stuff was still real. And I'm like, oh, I would love to go watch this launch. I would love to go here. I'd love to go there. It's classified. We couldn't go. You had to have, you know, special clearance to be able to get there. And I'm like, well, that's weird. (laughs) If it's also innocent, why can't we all just go and watch? Yeah, hundred, hundred percent. If you, um, if you watch the space shuttle launches there, when, whenever, you know, there's two types of launches. Um, one, they're actually launching something, okay? And they have the ability to launch good-sized rockets, but they're not filled with everything they say. They're mostly empty. They're helium. Um, you know, there's helium in them to make them lighter, and it's just a, it's just a side show. It's just a, um, it's just a stage show. Like the, 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 sp- the shuttle, this orange tank is a Macy's Day, pro- pro- Day Parade balloon. Okay, it's literally <laughs> filled with helium. This thing supposedly weighs four million pounds. The thrust from that; these people are so far away they can't even see the rocket. It's over a tree line, over ten miles away, and wow. they can see like this a tiny little tip of the nose, right? But they edit this to make it look like these people are right there, and right. they're not. Okay, they're not right there. This is a, a a beauty shot, and then all of this thrust should literally pulverize this fence and everything else around it just yeah. like a 300 mile an hour we see just saw what a 300 mile an hour hurricane a tornado could do um it, it turns everything into you know just destroys everything but now that that thing superheated thrust now this is not cgi this is real because you can see the smoke trail okay so they're re- actually launching something it's just a big fireworks show and um there's other ones that when um that when they go up, they're not real. These are the classified launches, okay? Where, you know, they do it at night where they launch something small so someone could say they saw something, but they're launching, um, they're launching projected holograms, okay? What am I looking? I'm looking for a SpaceX. There we go, SpaceX. So this one I call the, the Tupac. Well, before I show you that, and I show this all the time, but it's worth for anyone that hasn't seen it, this thing is clearly still in the atmosphere, 
okay? It's going, yeah. it's going multitude times faster than the SR-71, okay? Mm -hmm. The SR-71 is that you know, spy plane that looks like a razor blade, but this thing somehow could go faster. These things can now go sideways. This thing is probably going <laughs> 30 or 40 miles an hour, maybe 50, okay? Right, this is just a, yeah. a, a balloon, right? Now these things are real. And they're gonna fall into the ocean. They're gonna recover them and have a whole big parade, bringing them back into the harbor. Everyone's gonna be like, yeah, rah, rah. It's <laughs> all a stage show, okay? Now this, oh, that's the wrong one. There we go. This is what I call the two-pack rocket, right? Because it's a hologram. And we've caught them with holographic projectors on their lawn. NASA has these big lights and we're like, what are these things? And we zoomed in, got an, uh, a name and it's from a holographic projection company. But there's oh, no wow. smoke trail. No. There's no smoke trail. And they always show you this close shot, okay? That cameraman's great. How about pull back a little bit? Let us see what's really going on. I don't even know if this thing's moving, okay? This could be on a stick in a green screen studio, <laughs> okay? That's but look true. what happened. Something happened. Oh, no way. Yeah, it something glitched. happened. It glitched, <laughs> okay? Oh, this, was, this was being shown. And <laughs> now again... Are they that dumb? Was it? Were they showing it live? Or are they or are they rubbing it in our faces? Or are they testing our intelligence? I don't know. I go back and forth all the time. I'm like, they're that stupid. Well, then I'm people like, don't question anything anymore. <laughs> Even if they see it, they just ignore it. A hundred percent. Yeah. Holy cow. And then when you look at um, have you seen the upright landings? Right? Oh, okay. I la I a friend of mine, and, she, and she's an, an engineer, an electrical engineer. We go back and forth. She believes this. And I'm like, no way. Is this It's fake. It's CGI. It's fake. This is a movie from the 1950s, pre-programming us of, of rockets landing on rafts. This one here. Now, I'm an ocean kite surfer, wind surfer. I know conditions. These are huge swells out here. It's blown five to 10 foot swells. It's blown like 30 knots out here, 20, 20 to 30. Um. And this raft is heaving up and down, okay? Mm -hmm. This thing is going to land perfectly on that. You couldn't land a, uh, no. um, a, a Harrier jump jet, which has four stabilizers. It's like a drone, right? Uh -huh. you, couldn't, you would have a hell of a time landing it in these conditions on this raft. I know what's the funny thing is, this is like one of the only ones from this far shot, which they don't show us anymore, um, where we, we see it actually land, but we don't. You see, all of a sudden it cuts. Every single time that thing's coming in, the camera on the drone ship, no humans on the ship, cuts out. And they're always like, oh, it cut out. Oh, it landed, right? It's, it's <laughs> unbelievable. It's, un, it's unreal. Uh, um, you know, and, and it's interesting that you mentioned that because I've, you know, taken several cruises and um, one especially, uh, oh, no, I think the big one was like on my way to, to Mexico and we hit like a massive sea swells. I think they were saying, um, I forget. And I know that when they measure the waves, it's different. Like if they say 13 foot waves, it's actually larger. But anyway, but we hit some serious swells. And I've never been on the ocean where it's just, just calm and peaceful. There's always waves, always. And so, yeah, I never thought about that. So if they have this platform out in the middle of an ocean that's doing this, how are they gonna land that thing? Right. And then look at this thing. This is what, what, what are they showing us here? That's a joke. It's just a joke. I mean, that thing might've gone up and down. It's just a helium balloon with a weight on the bottom. So it kind of stays upright and it went up, you know, 50 feet and then back down. I don't even think that happened. Okay. And then yeah, you, know, you look at all, stabilize it. all the rockets, NASA launches, they all shoot up and curve out yeah. and crash into the Bermuda Triangle. Yeah, and that's another thing I, I often notice too, is they all arc. And then someone had the nerve to say, well, that's because the earth is a sphere and it's following the, I'm not, no, 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 no. <laughs> They're arcing way too soon. <laughs> Absolutely. And um, I, while I have this globe, I, I, this is something I really wanted to show you. My daughter and I were talking about this and she came up with such an excellent point. Now, okay, and we know that, right, Neil, the, the weirdo Neil deGrasse Tyson guy, he, now you said in our last video that he states that in the, around the equator, it bulges 14 miles, right? Or something like that. The water supposedly bulges. Now, just as an example, um, say that, okay, here we go. We've got this ocean, right? And if we truly are in a globe, if you are a swimmer right here, 
you should be able to go in, dive down, straight down, and exit down here in the water if we're on a globe. You just go straight through the water and you will come out the other side. That never happens. What happens anywhere you go and you go in the water and you go straight down, where do you end up? On land. You always are hitting the bottom of the ocean. You're right. never going straight through. So how can we be on a globe if you can't swim from up here to down here? Well, say with a scuba tank or whatever, it, it's impossible. So, and, and you try to tell, explain this to people going, okay, if we're on a globe, I should go here and I should come out here if I'm going straight down. And they're all like, what? That doesn't make sense. Well, exactly. This doesn't make sense, but they can't grasp that. Submarines set their wings or fins or whatever they're called at to main, follow the, the straight line, a uh, certain depth down. If that was the case and the water's curved, they should pop out of the water, but they don't because- Exactly. And a submarine down to the bottom can use its sonar line of sight. If sonar hits a hill of mud or dirt, it's going to bounce back and say, look, there's a wall there. But they can see another submarine 100 miles away. There should be a mile high, over a mile high, 6,600 foot mountain in between yeah. the two submarines. But somehow it's sonar can see it. And the only argument that Globers have is the radar, the sonar climbs up, hits the submarine, bounces back, and then comes back and shows them the hidden submarine on the other side. Sorry, you, you don't understand. Yeah, it, sonar doesn't about. work that way. <laughs> Yeah, it's like not at all. I yeah, I like that one. Right. Um, oh oh, um, I saw you do a video last night. It was like, and I'm gonna jump ahead of my notes because this was so cool. Um, where you were um, talking about Saturn and yes. um, the the rings of Saturn and, and the lights because I've seen Saturn through my own telescope and because um, like I said, I was I love the sky and the stars. Please talk about this. Yeah. So. When we look up at the luminaries in the sky, the only thing we can truthfully say, uh, you know, not, not believe what Disney and NASA tells us, um, we can look and say, oh, that's a light. Yeah, because I can see it. And how far is it? Don't know. How big is it? Don't know. What's it made out of? Don't know. Okay, we don't know. But they're clearly here within the Earth system. Now, I've seen Saturn. And when I look at Saturn, you know, I see the, the ball and the rings, but they're both lit up literally like they're lights because they are lights. Okay. Yeah. The rings are supposedly ice particles and rocks, right? And the planet is, how is it reflecting light? Why is it always full? Why do we always see a, a whole sphere, right? Now, it sure looks like that the light is blocked out, you know, like the, it's blocked. When I see it, you do see the light kind of go behind it. Um, maybe it has something to do with the, with the sun then it is lighting it up. I believe that the sun is sending electricity, for lack of a better word, and lighting up the moon. And the angle it hits the moon is the light that, that, the light that we see on the moon. These things are their own lights. They're all tied to the sun, not by gravity. They're all, they're all tied um, you know, to the electrical system. This is a giant electrical system. The sun, is the sun and the moon are the anode and cathode of the battery system of the, of the Earth battery. Well, yeah, and if anybody, and I know not a lot of people do, but those who, who read the Bible and understand it, it says that the moon and the sun are their own light. They give off right. their light. It doesn't say that the moon is reflecting sunlight. And I know that can't be true because I even when the moon is out, you have the sun and the moon out at the same time during the day, and it's just right there, and you have this massive sun, but it only has partial lighting on the moon. Well, and if it's, it's right there, the whole thing should be lit up if it's being reflected. Well, they say it's the angle of the sun. You know, when there's a full moon while the sun is on the other side, that makes sense. But there's a right now, this at time of this recording, the sunlight does not, the, they're both in the day sky, at least they were yesterday. It's going to, it's going to change soon. Um, but the, the angle doesn't line up. Okay. Right. Where'd I go? Here I am. Yes. And, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. So the, 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 the sun should be up here somewhere. It should yep. be way, way up here. I can't reach because I go off screen. <laughs> but, um, but it's not lining up with where the sun is. Yeah. So, it, and I was getting ready to point at the screen for you. <laughs> it's on the bottom where that sunlight is hitting the moon. 
if their theory was correct, that whole bottom portion should be lit up and the top darker. But instead you have the, the top very crescent part of the moon is lit at an angle and it just, it never makes sense. So every time I see the sun and the moon, I go outside and I look at that and I'm like, I, I'm trying to figure out their, their, their theory and it just never matches. I'm like, none of this makes sense. None of it at all. Um, there was another thing. Um, this is kind of what we see when we see yes. Saturn. It's just this light. It's amazing, amazing light. And you know, what is it? Why are all the planets named after gods? Okay. Yeah. It's very, very interesting. These are energetic sources we here within the Earth system. Yeah. And I've looked through my telescope and I see exactly what you're showing. Um, I see Saturn almost like that, but at a different angle, because I think where I'm at, it's a little bit different. Um, but Mars, yeah, I, I don't see a quote unquote planet. That's what I see when I look at Mars. Yeah. Interesting. And it's just beautiful. Not a rocky ball floating in an in infinite space vacuum. These are provable things. And then the brightness, you know, Jupiter's in the sky now. Um, it's so bright. How does that dusty, dirty ball reflect light back to Earth with a sun that's way smaller than our sun? Because from Jupiter, the sun is tiny. How does that tiny sun light up Jupiter and then reflect all the way back to Earth and look brighter than any star in the sky? Yeah, give me, doesn't give me a break. Sense. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, not at all. And um, there was a, a thing my, my actually my daughter wanted me to ask you. And because um, what she heard, and this kind of goes along with what you're showing right now, is um, someone had I'm showing a cartoon if, for those of you wondering, <laughs> love those cartoons, um, was that they she was either reading an article or watched a video where they were talking about um, the the planets and and how the sun is able to reflect off of their quote unquote atmosphere and, and because they supposedly have a protective coating or a protective shell or something around them and and my daughter i don't want to ruin her question because it was such a good question but she's like how if the sun is such a massive ball of gas how is it not vaporizing all of these things that are closer to it like mercury and Venus, you know, why, and anything else I could get closer, wouldn't that protective coating be vaporized and then these planets themselves be vaporized? None of it makes any sense whatsoever. We just had an alignment of all of the sun, moon, and stars, sun, moon, and planets um, the other day. They all lined up. How come their gravity doesn't nudge each other? Okay. You know, these are, these are impossibilities. Um, you know, the, it's called the three body problem where we can't get, we can't model more than two gravitational objects orbiting each other. You add a third body orbiting either one of the first two bodies and the model just falls apart. However, we have, I don't know, 40, 50 objects in our solar system alone and the system constantly repeats itself again and again. We know exactly where everything's going to be. Give me a break. Yes, makes no sense at all. Yeah. And I remember, um, it was a while ago when they were talking about when they started to make a big deal about alignments and everything's going to align and we don't know what's going to happen. Earthquakes might be going on. You know, this was the news again, years before I even heard about, you know, what you guys, what the flat earth. And, and I'm like, well, well this just doesn't make sense. And then when no catastrophic events occurred during the alignments, they've slowly kind of let that go by the wayside. So I'm like, well, they obviously can't, it cannot be what they're saying because in reality, well, theoretically, if you have all these gravitational pulls and they're all so close in proximity and now they're all in the same line, you would think that it would make sense to have something happen, but nothing ever does. It's just another day in the neighborhood. Did I show you, have I shown you the um, optical illusion with the tables? You so, have, but please do it again. Yeah, so when, when people look and they say, well, I know what size that is. You know, are these two tables the same width and length? And everybody says no, but actually they're exactly the same width and length, right? And even though I'm exposing this to you, normally when you expose something, uh -huh. your, your mind can't unsee it. It's like you still right. can't reconcile that. And no. so unless you can touch it and measure it, you don't know, right? You don't know. Um, the size and shape of it. See, I, that, I don't know how many times, and I actually saw a, a video of um, 
a museum where they have this same thing and you get to go in and, and measure things. And the, the guy was videotaping and they had that same exact thing in the, in the museum. And I, I don't know how many times I've seen this. I can't, my brain, like you said, it can't reconcile that. It still looks different, completely different. Right. And, Amazing. Um, and so we're in this impossible more than three body solar system where every year the stars reset, every 18 years, the, the eclipses reset. We know where all the planets are going to be all of the time, right? We know all of this stuff. How do we know this? Unless it's in a perfectly um, ordered system. This is a monument that on November 11th at 1111 a.m., the sun lines up with all of these holes and lights up this little memorial. It's for a veterans memorial. But the sun shines right through these holes and is magnified right on the spot every year at 1111 at 1111 on 1111 at 1111. Okay. Well, that's how weird. is that possible in a heliocentric beehive? Right. Wouldn't things, when we have an alignment, wouldn't the earth just be tilted just a little bit pulled this way, pulled that way, but everything works perfectly according to our timeline for millions and millions and millions and millions of years. When in fact, you know, it wouldn't work perfectly for five minutes with all right. of those gravitational forces. How does the sun hold on to all of these distant planets, but all of the planets hold on to their moons, but the sun ignores the moons, okay? When yeah, our that... moon comes around our, toward, towards the sun, how come it doesn't get yanked off? How come the sun doesn't grab it? How come it doesn't it pull it? How come it doesn't slow it down when it's going away from the sun? These are things that people refuse to think about, okay? It, it, because they haven't been taught to think. They've been taught to memorize and regurgitate because a guy in a bow tie and a white lab coat told you, okay? Right? The, the, you know, this is, we, people, you say, you know, what's the radius of the earth? Well, I don't know, it's, it's 3,958, we're just under 4,000 miles. How do you figure it out? Well, somebody figured it out. Well, how'd they figure it out? Well, you know, smarter people figured it out. Nobody knows. It's all made up nonsense. And if you don't have the radius of the earth, you don't have anything else. You don't have the distance sizes of planets. Nothing, nothing works. And the radius right. of the earth is provably not what they tell us. Because a six foot tall person standing at the edge of calm water should see a physical horizon at three miles but we can zoom in on things 10, 15, 20 miles away. We can see things so far away with today's consumer optics that we would require a radius of over 270,000 miles versus the 4,000 that they tell us it is. Wow. And, you know, and I just thought of something too. And because they tell us that we, especially like over water as an example, that you only see so far and then that's the horizon and it dips off and blah, 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 blah. But I think, what is it like three miles? That you're, if you're standing on a beach to the quote unquote horizon, like three six, miles? Six foot, it's yet, a six foot drop of three miles. So a six foot okay. tall person standing at the edge of calm water should only be able to see um, three miles. Yes. And then what people don't stop to think is that, okay, that's three miles that way. And then they're all believing, okay, yes, that's, that's the horizon that's dipping off there. But if you're going side to side, was that 10 miles at least, if you're seeing this way to this way, and it's completely flat, but yet you're supposed to believe it goes this way. Why is everything flat, but yet they want us to believe it's round? I don't get it. Everywhere you look, it's flat. Right. They want to, they want to tell you, well, the earth is too big for you, uh, to to actually see that right and but 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 they want you to believe that boats go over the horizon yeah, yeah. and like they're calling that a horizon there so say three miles from where they're to to that boat but if you're going side to side where it's completely flat and straight out it's over 10 miles and there's no curve in and this is, this is where a lot of people get tied up they think they see a curve so if if somebody's standing here that's uh the, the, they see the same distance in all directions so here so this person's looking out and he sees X distance here. <clears throat> well, the atmosphere is the same. He's seeing X distance in all directions. Okay. He's seeing the same distance in all directions. You with me? Okay. Yes. Let me make that a little better. So he's seeing the same distance in all directions. But if you, if you um, draw a straight line over that, this is what you see. This straight line is going through space. And then they go, there's the curve of the earth. You're seeing the curve of the earth. 
right? But you're not. This is the limit of your vision to your horizon. You're drawing a line through the air. The higher up you go, the farther you can see. So mm-hmm. that apparent horizon is going to move, but that horizon is a cir- oops, that horizon is a circle. Mm-hmm. The horizon is a circle because our vision of you is a circle. It's like putting your head in the middle of a hula hoop and at eye level, that edge of the hula hoop is the limit of your vision. You can draw a tangent line to that and claim that hula hoop's a sphere, but we know that that vision that you're seeing is a flat circle. Yeah. And, and one more thing, cause I know we're getting short on time and I definitely want you to share your, your app for sure. Um, cause was one other thing and how they're always saying like the spin, right? So if the earth is spinning super fast, right. And they're saying that it's way faster at the equator than up here and it's slowing here. This is a solid mass. You cannot have a spin of this mass faster here, but so at the top of the bottom. They would have to be on some type of gear. This They would have to not be connected. And, and again, this just boggles my mind that people fall for this. Either the entire globe is spinning at the same speed or it doesn't exist at well, all. If, if, the, if we lived on a globe, which is impossible, right. at the right. equator, you're moving 1,000 miles an hour, but in Alaska, you're moving 300 miles an hour. It doesn't work that way. It, well, it does. It does if we lived wow. on a ball. The problem is if you took off from the North Pole or Alaska and you flew to Ecuador, how are you going to land on a runway that's moving sideways at 1,000 miles an hour when you only have that initial 300 miles an hour of sideways initial inertia, right? If you want to add the speed of the airplane to it, which is stupid, um, that brings you up to 800 miles an hour. So now you got a runway that's moving 200 miles an hour sideways, okay? Nonsense. It's utter nonsense. And, and once you see it, you can't unsee it. So, you know, again, why am I talking about flat earth now with all the craziness going on in the world? And the answer is because that's why all the craziness is going on in the world. People are lost. <clears throat> People are lost in space. They don't know who they are. They don't know what they are. Okay. They have no idea the power that we truly have. You know, why, why lie about the shape of the earth? Who cares about the shape of the earth? It's the lie that matters. Right? They don't want us to know that our thoughts create our reality. Our thoughts create our reality. This is a magical world we live in, and they don't want us to know that. They want to, they, we are free, and nobody has to give us rights because we have God-given inalienable rights. Right. Okay? So to say, well, you, you, know, you just do this, we'll, we'll let you go shopping. No, I can go shopping. Okay? Mm-hmm. I'm, not, I'm not listening to any of this. And, and anyone that thinks that someone has power over them, that's in your imagination. Right. In your The only imagination. power they have is what you give them. Right. So, so yeah, I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. So on these last few minutes, oh, we're actually probably over. Can you please just show everybody your app? I have this app. I love this app. And I watch the little short clips almost every day. Um, so let everybody know what they're missing. Real quick. It's the, it's the Flat Earth Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app. And every day there's a new featured video right here and different topics each day. And it's like, if you don't know what to look for, watch that video. If you want to answer some specific questions, hit the question mark and up come playlists of videos that YouTube is hiding from you. Okay. Um, you know, you Google flat earth, you might as well just remain a Glover for the rest of your life because they're going to feed you nonsense. Google any term, any phrase with the word flat earth in it, you get the same results, all propaganda. You get Bill Nye, the lying guy with the bow tie. You get Simon Dan. You get Professor Dave. These are actors put out there with scripted videos that make you try to make you feel stupid for even questioning the narrative. Okay. Flat Earth is the easiest thing to see, but you just have to put down your ego and your lifelong ball training and let it go. Just let it go and then use your common sense and don't give it up for nonsense. That's what they want you to do. Um, Tons of resources in here. Tons of stuff. Um, you know, uh, the, the mud floods button alone will blow your mind. And uh, there's books. If you, if, you, if you want books, books are amazing. Whoops. We go there. Um, also, I've, I've got, you know, flat earth related things. If, you, if you're looking to buy something flat earth related, amazing stuff on here. One of my favorites right now is uh, Truth Smacks. It's an awesome nut mix, but it has <laughs> truth quotes all over it so i'm giving it to my sleeping friends for christmas right nice. it has flatter there's flat earth version there's truth version 
um, amazing, amazing, fun stuff. Um, get out of that, and um, all sorts of stuff. T-shirts, you know, if you if you want to flat smack somebody with a T-shirt, um, all sorts of stuff. So, one of my favorites is uh, the 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 bold hoodies right and the the one that says flat earther it's gigantic it goes out people can't help but start the conversation okay um languages playlists in different languages uh most people listening are speaking english but all sorts of stuff in here and um just go read the reviews if you're unsure the app is three dollars right oh last thing is that's three dollars but there's a friend finder which we just added and it shows you where the other flat earthers are around you. Here are the flat earthers that are around me. And I could tap on any one of those blue dots and send that person a message. Okay. Mm-hmm. I can do a group message to, I got everybody within, um, within uh, 50 kilometers and it's, there's 250 people within 50 kilometers of me. I could do an instant meetup. Hey, tomorrow, 6 PM, the, the so-and-so bar and grill, you know, come one, come all. You now just have a new, group of people to um to associate with and the, the thing i was saying before about um you know homeschooled kids kids that are people that are awake um every single blue dot there you have more in common with them than you do with anybody that any other site is going to match you up with you know that you'll randomly meet at a party every single one of those people knows the earth is not a globe they know um about the insanity that's going on in the world so it's the Flat Earth, Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app. Um, you can just scan this QR code. You can just you go can to just flatearthdave.com and link it there. Just make sure because Android has a fake one out there under the same name, some of the same graphics. The app is, hor- <clears throat> is horrible. So don't send me an email telling me my app sucks because everybody <laughs> loves my app. Uh, well, I have your app and I, I do. I like it a lot. And um, also... Um, I went ahead and I did the subscription. I know people don't have to, but you know, I, I have no problem supporting. So, so here's the thing. It, it costs money, you know, the, the server and uh, sending messages right. costs money, but I made it. So if you don't subscribe, you can still get group messages. Like if I send out a message and half the people, you know, that I send it to 250 people and half the people aren't subscribed, that's okay. They still get the message. They still get the information. And I include my email address in there and they can email me. So now they, mm-hmm. they just got it for free. But if you want to send messages, it's eleven dollars right. for a year. That's like buying me a margarita, and not tipping the bartender very well. And then you have it for a year, okay? Right. And I, you know, and I have no problem with that at all. I, I've heard some people make some really snide comments, but I'm like, really? I mean, I pay more than that um, for doing other things. Just there, I can't, tipping a waiter. So there, there's no other subscription. There's no other subscription. There's nothing. There's very few things that cost less than eleven dollars a year. Yeah. Okay? I, so. And- it's been money well spent. I love the app and I highly recommend it. So scan that, that barcode. I'm telling you, it's, it's a great app. Yeah. And unfortunately we're out of time. I, again, I could just talk to Dave all day, every day. I mean, he's just so knowledgeable on the subject. So um, again, I want to say thank you, Malachi. I'm sure you, I don't know how far you made it, but if you made it this far, I hope you enjoyed um, Flat Earth Dave. And thank you for everybody for watching. And thank you so much, Dave, for coming back and, and sharing more. And uh, hopefully six months down the line, I can get you. I get, I, my questions, they just never end. And you always come up with more and more interesting things. But that, I really hope you come back. It, this, le- this line of thinking, once you go down this road, there's always more questions. There's never, like, I don't sleep a lot because there's so much to learn. You will never be bored again, ever. There's no chance for me being bored for one single minute, whether I'm stuck in traffic, whether I'm in a line somewhere, because I've always got something to listen to, something to watch, something to, something to learn or something to think about. It's, it's just absolutely amazing. And, you know, I'm really living my life the fullest because I'm, I'm really seeing the world for what it is. And it's an amazing place. It really is. Perfect. Thank you so much. And I hope you guys all have a great day. All right. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thanks.